Yo, what's good, man? Hit that thumbs up button, yo. Uh, so I was watching <laughs> the fifty one fifty came back. So Corey didn't take <laughs> my advice was to take some time off. Corey came back and responded to Zoe. Zoe kind of tapped around the bush, beat around the bush. He did a lot of content over the last week, but he really was just speaking about himself and his personal issues and you know he that's not his brand he's not gonna go back and forth in a, a shit talking contest with Corey. that's not who he is he's not a comic he's not witty he's not gonna win that back and forth so zoe did what he what you think he would do uh darlene brought her raggedy ass back i knew and like i say the only reason that fight even that that argument started was because of darlene Corey was getting on darlene as usual and then Zoe said, fuck it, put his cape on and said, nah, I'm tired of that shit. Uh, but Darlene Ortiz came back. And I'm not surprised she came back because Darlene is, it, it, most people have issues with Darlene because of her thought. My biggest issues with her is not even her, but the stuff she say or her segment, these loose talk. She don't got, I don't have respect for a woman that don't have respect for herself. Um, Darlene pushing 60. Darlene, my mom's age almost. And I wish somebody would. I wish my mother would sit on a podcast every week and let a grown man disrespect her like the way Corey be going in on Darlene. And I'm like, bro, that's somebody's mother. You know what I mean? And he just, he, he goes in on her all the time. And one thing about Darlene is she's the only person on that show that's never missed an episode, to my knowledge. I've never seen her on anybody else's podcast. Not Freeze, Zoe, Bobby, Poe, nobody. She... Sticks to Corey like glue. She is a true ride or die chick. If you one of them niggas that like a pushover bro that's gonna put up with your attitude and let you tell her anything and ride till the fucking wheels fall off, Darlene is the type of girl you need because she ain't leaving that nigga side. I personally think they fuck around. But um, anyway, Corey was going in on Zoe saying that, you know, he basically tried to justify what he did and made it seem as if it was for good TV. It was for good content. And I'm like, wow, bro, that's... That was almost worse than the, these Hollywood people you talk about that are sellouts who align themselves with Hollywood uh, humiliation rituals to get on. You know, that was worse than that, because those people, at least, number one, they get the benefit and they become millionaires and they get all these big movies and shit. But they're not necessarily throwing their friends under the bus, let alone publicly. You're throwing your friends under the bus publicly, disregarding discretion completely. And blasting niggas, and for what? For a couple of thousand views on YouTube, nigga? On the shit you ain't even got monetized? Like, I don't understand that. And look, I say, I'm a fan of Corey Holcomb. I'm not an apologist. There's a difference. You got niggas out here that are apologists who are running around here with pom-poms uh, trying to justify Corey's nonsense just because he's funny. And I'm like, nah, bro. And the thing is, they'll say, well, Corey owe, you know, Zoe owe him 20 Gs for the, for the Aries fight. And let's clear that up, because it wasn't like Zoe just asked Corey for 20 G straight up. No, that was the lawsuit money Corey had to kick out from Aerie Spears. And he was like, well, it ain't my fault Zoe liked the fight. He can't control his temper. Blah, blah, blah. That show got out of hand from the first 10 minutes it started. That shit built up and built up. It didn't happen just out the blue. Corey just turned around and Zoe was hitting on uh, Aries. You could see the tension in that room. The whole entire episode and not once did Corey step in and, and ease the tension or try to uh, shift the energy. He was entertained by that nonsense because, like I say, that project life, he, that project mentality that he has. And, and it's almost like the beauty of 5150 was the fact that it what made it different was it, it was unprofessional. Unlike most podcasts, as you see, that, that a situation like that would never happen. Well, the beauty of 5150 being unprofessional ended up being what killed it in the end as far as the lack of professionalism. You let that shit get to that point. I don't care how professional or how uh, somebody is, it ain't but so much shit a grown man going to take before he had to defend himself or he snapped. You know? Now, he <laughs> Corey kept start, he got this shirt on called When I, I Got You When I Hit a Lick. Now, that was with... Zoe kept saying last week, I got you when I hit a lick. So Corey's trying to make profit off of this argument, which is some fuck shit. You trying to profit off of a fallout with one of your homeboys. And like I say, the feminine energy is what I really see with Corey. At one point last week, the nigga was clapping his hands in between making his point. Like he was like, that's what I'm talking about, Zoe. You, 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 you. I'm like, no, that's, that's, ain't that some hood rat project female shit? And I, I, look, I don't know 
how Corey was raised, but I could guarantee you he came up under some welfare aid, single mom project shit. A lot of women, and let, no disrespect to women who probably listening to this, how many women have you ever met in your life that just flat out own they own bullshit and admit to when they wrong. Most women don't admit when they're wrong. It's an ego thing. So when you got women out here who don't admit when they wrong, raising young boys and trying to raise them up to be young men, what do you think these boys who turn into men are going to act like? Because they was raised by women who was on that same fuck shit. And that's the thing with Corey. Corey will never admit when he's wrong, even when he is. Dead fucking wrong. He cannot admit when he's wrong. Everybody who left, it was all their fault. Genevieve, Sarah, uh, I'm not going to include Freeze, uh, but Freeze left, but it wasn't necessarily an issue. But Genevieve, Sarah, Chris, Zoe, uh, some people say the, neighbor, the relationship with Nate is kind of shaky. Bobby, POTUS, everybody, it was all everybody else's fault. Not once can Corey just flat out say and own Mr. Stan on it, can't just say, yeah, I was wrong. He can't, he can't admit that. That's that feminine female shit. He cannot admit. And that's a big part of being a man is owning up to your shit when you wrong. Look yourself in the mirror, admit it to yourself, and then admit it to whoever you was wrong to. He can't do that. He can't do that shit. That shit it, it, it kills him to admit he was wrong. He's going to laugh his way and try to joke his way out of this situation just like he did every other situation. Just like he did with Bobby. Fell out with Bobby, clowned him for about two years, then he found him another punching bag and Aerie Spears. Now, the new punching bag is Zoe. For the last few months, the punching bag was Grady. So you see the pattern here? Bobby, Grady, Zoe, he's just gonna joke and laugh his way throughout, you know, the, the, the transitional period for the fans. So Marcus was on there, you know, it's like, it's almost as if it's his job just to sit there and laugh at Corey's jokes. And Craig came back, and I don't know why Craig keeps coming back. Craig don't really need that show no more. Craig's show is, is catching momentum. Craig got viral videos on YouTube with over a million views that ain't got shit to do with commentary. Just him roasting niggas and joking. Uh, but they better be careful, because it's not an if, it's a win. When you do fall out with Corey, you better hope you and him got a clean record behind closed doors, because if you don't, he will air it. He has no, he has no value for discretion whatsoever. And like a female, like a messy female, like a hood rat, he got to air every damn thing out. He do. If he, he, he is no better than these, 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 these hood rat females that get on Instagram Live, Facebook. They got to tell everybody business. They got receipts. They got screenshots. I mean, that's the thing you know, Corey going to be screenshotting text messages. I wouldn't be surprised. He is a messy ass nigga. And the way he put it is, I'm I, I, I air everything out. I, I'm going to show you what I... I'm going to let it be known. I'm like, bro, you if, if you're content with putting your business out there, that's fine. But just because you're content with it don't mean everybody else is. They really should put a disclaimer out for anybody who ever steps on that show. Are you okay with having your shit put out there? Because Corey going to tell it. Told everybody Grady was cheating on his girl. Told everybody his old business. If he don't give a fuck. I mean, this is a messy ass so-called grown man. And if the sad thing about it is he's 51. Old dogs don't learn new tricks. He is who he is. What, who, who you gonna do? Get him a mentor? He's fifty fucking one. You ain't gonna get him a mentor. What are you gonna put? Who gonna put their arms around this nigga and put him in the right direction? He's fifty one. He is who he is. He is not gonna change. This is who Corey Holcomb is. And the sad part about it is he he he's divided his audience now. You know that video went up and it had a thousand dislikes to like three thousand likes. So the audience is split basically like sixty to forty. A lot of people is like turned off. They not fucking with it no more. Me, I was already turned off from the show before that. But you know, you've divided the audience, and you're just gonna continue to divide the audience. And now people are starting to see the pattern. See, his deodorant for so many years was his sense of humor. He could, he, you would overlook a lot of his fuck shit because he was funny. And then it gets to a point when you keep saying the same jokes you've been using for ten years. And it ain't funny no more. People see through the bullshit now. So, like I say, the show going to keep going on. They're going to keep doing their thing. You know, I, I don't see it completely going away. But as far as th the show falling off, it wasn't because of Zoe. The show Bennett fell off before Zoe left. <laughs> you know, that's how bad it got. And even with Zoe the last year and some change, I still couldn't really sit through a whole two hours of that. 
It just like, what are you talking about? What, what, give me a reason why I should sit here for two hours and watch this grown ass nigga, you know, air motherfuckers out and air out their own personal business for the sake of viewership. For because it's all good because we got some good views and we got some new merch to sell, you know. And all of Corey's uh, apologists, they they gonna run with it and. You know, elbow zoe. <laughs> they gonna run with it, but it, it was it was pretty sad. Like I say, you're not going to ever get Corey Holcomb to admit that he's a foul nigga. Cause like he'll say, "Well, I'm from. That's how we do it. Well, I'm from. Yeah, yeah. Where you, where you from? Ninety percent of the fucking population was raised by single mothers and was on welfare. And that project houses got turned out. That they tore down Robert Taylor in the late '90s. Like, bro, you're twenty something years removed from that." Lifestyle. Why are you still? Why is that mentality still engraved in you? Get the fuck out mentally. You're not, you're in Hollywood. You ain't in the projects, and you're 50. Why do you think being from Chicago gives you this street cred or this tough guy shit? And then he even brought up the Stephen A. Smith shit because that was really what hit a nerve when Zoe brought that up. I ain't about to fight no damn Stephen A. Smith. It wasn't about that. The sad, the part about that was you seen Stephen A. Smith and you ducked him. You seen him in that restaurant and said, oh, shit, there goes Stephen A. I ain't going to say nothing. Turned around and Stephen A stood up and addressed you. That was some gangster shit. I don't even fuck with Stephen A, but that was some gangster shit. Security or not, he confronted your fucking ass. You called him all kind of names and coons and Uncle Toms for two, three years, and he approached you. And it had your ass sitting down there with that big greasy piece of chicken looking crazy with the big buck eyes. You know, so... You know, he did it to himself, man. And, you know, the Corey apologists are going to say, well, man, what was he supposed to do? He wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, nigga. You damn shouldn't have to take a picture with no fucking big piece of chicken in your hand, nigga. That, that shit, and the fingers was greasy. You know, but this is who you're watching, you know. And I, I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I'm not about to watch a two-hour therapy session with a grown fucking man who just is all over the fucking place. You know what I mean? So, God bless, uh... The fans, you know, <laughs> 5150, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a sad day, but some people are going to keep rocking with it. Go ahead, watch it if you want to watch it. That's just my recap on what I thought. I didn't watch the whole show. I heard he did a diss track to Zoe. You know, they always do their little uh, music after the break. You know, Corey's going to keep, and I guess somebody said, I bet you uh, Corey can't go a week without mentioning Zoe or Grady. Of course he can. You know, petty females can't let shit go. And that's what, Corey's a cancer on top of all of this. And some of the closest people in my life are cancers. And one thing about a cancer, you cross a cancer or piss them off, they take that shit to the grave. <laughs> they take that shit to the grave. You know, so you're not going to, Corey's going to continue to uh, ag on Zoe until maybe they run into each other. Because you know whenever he run into somebody that he's been talking about, that's usually when the energy shifts and everything is all good. So maybe Zoe going to have to come see Corey. Because Corey was talking about, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I thought I was going to have to fight Zoe. <laughs> I was like, bro, one of these young niggas going to put you on your big ass, man. Let me know what y'all think about Corey uh, responding to Zoe Williams in the comment section, man.